The thing that I read at Stanford, the thing that changed my life in my, the, all my career, you know, when I came in uh, to Stanford, um, I was really interested in the kind of stuff that John Hennessy was doing. The, um, uh, and I'll, I'll talk um, about computer architecture, about how to make computers go fast, fast, fast. And then I had a couple of mentors at um, internships that I was at at Sun, which is not kind of where you think about HCI coming from, but also here at Stanford. And there was a guy, a guy in my dorm named Sean White, who will be, I'll talk about through this, through this piece, through the conversation today. And Sean kept telling me I should do this thing called HCI. Sean was Terry, one of Terry Winograd's first, very first grad students in design at a time when we were just trying to figure out what the difference between design was and human factors and usability. And Sean said, you've got to do this. You'll love it. And I was resistant, <clears throat> really resistant. I was like, no, no, I'm a computer architecture guy. I'm going to do multi-core uh, you know, uh, instruction sets in silicone. <laughs> silicon. um, and obviously, I, I just really wasn't interested in HCI. And then I, then I read this piece by a guy named Mitch Kapor. And Mitch, um, Mitch is the founder of Lotus. Uh, he started, you know, he was one of the first people that really successfully commercialized the spreadsheet. And he wrote this piece called the Software Design Manifesto. And what he said is that software needs architects just like buildings need architects. I think we think about this, I think it's obvious now, but it wasn't obvious in 1991. And it's interesting because I, I was just reading it today. And what he said in 1991 is that the re revolution hasn't succeeded because what started is this very human counterculture thing to give PCs to people. That was a revolutionary idea in the 80s. And what he said is, well, shit, this, is, this has become the mainstream. Now computers are defining us instead of us defining computers. And what I read is, when I read this bold thing, he could have written this today. And he could have written about mobile instead of computers and phones instead of computers. And what he could have said is like, the revolution hasn't yet succeeded because in spite of the amazing progress and the amazing work that we're doing with these things, we're still not fundamentally human in our, in our interactions with technology. And again, that's a, that's a, a thread that's, re that's led all the way through my career. And I think that we're finally waking up to it. I think that Steve, coming back to Apple, finally woke up the world about how important design, how important human factors is, and how, more, more importantly, how important thinking about technology in context could be and how powerful it could be.